Greetings, mere mortals, and welcome back to Monster Month. We've been looking at the monsters from Valor vs. Venom these past few weeks, so it seems only fitting that we end with the king of those monsters. Meet Venomous Maximus. This figure was released in 2004 with obviously original body parts. Now, this is an awesome figure! I don't even know where to begin! Well, his uniform is as good a place as any. It does give him something of a Roman general or gladiator, offset by his monstrous arm and complexion. He has an air of regality and bestiality all at once. What? Ah, um, I've just been informed that that word doesn't mean what I thought it meant. Moving on! The arm, it is quite exquisite, isn't it? It looks perfectly horrendous and has awesome detailing. The only bit of criticism I have with it is that the elbow swivel joint is molded in the grey plastic like his other arm. It really should have had the color of the monster arm. I don't even know what you'd call that color, really. Huh, let's say it's Kruger Crimson. I can't overlook his hair. Just look at it flow! And it's braided! Braided! You know what this means, don't you? There is some lowly viper within the Cobra ranks whose sole purpose it is to braid this guy's hair every so often. I bet he didn't think that was part of the deal when signing up with a ruthless terrorist organization. Now, let's talk about his accessories! They are quite on the money, too. Uh, firstly, there's a small but well-detailed dagger. Hell, the thing has got a mini cobra head at the end of the handle. Now, that's cool. Secondly, there's his staff. There have been a few in the G.I. Joe line, but I can safely say this is the best one they've ever made. It's got the classic cobra logo on one end and an awesome cobra head on the other. They even painted the staff itself brown to make it look like wood. Love went into creating this little thing, and it shows. His best accessory, though, that is yet to come! It's only the greatest cape ever made for a G.I. Joe figure! It's got a huge Cobra logo. It attaches itself to the shoulder with a peg and doubles as a way to hide his terrifying arm, sort of giving off a Phantom of the Opera vibe. Much like a rug in a room, it really ties the look of the figure together. Just, um, don't pee on it. Overall, this is one hell of a figure. Regal. Intimidating, ferocious, all rolled into one. Now it's time to look at the character. And you know what? For once, we're not starting with the file card. Instead, we're gonna start with his one and only cartoon appearance. He was featured in the Valor vs. Venom movie. A CGI cartoon packaged with certain toys from that line. In the story, 
cobra is busy combining animal DNA with humans when they decide to kidnap General Hawk. Cobra Commander injects him with a combination of all the various strains of their venom to create the ultimate warrior. Well, no, not him, but uh, pretty close. He is to lead all the Venom troops as their general. He loses his humanity and becomes Venomous Maximus. He reluctantly agrees to obey Cobra Commander, not because he still got some General Hawk in him, but because he feels he should lead Cobra himself. And also, because the commander's staff is supposed to be able to control him. He soon says nuts to that, though, and takes over. Eventually, the Joes manage to come up with an antidote, because of course they do, and transform him back into Hawk. <laughs> me if you've heard this one. Cobra Commander wants to create the ultimate soldier to lead his troops into battle, only for said super soldier to turn on him and take over Cobra himself. Yeah, it's the exact same goddamn story as Serpentor. Meaning that Cobra Commander did the same stupid thing twice. At least in the cartoon, the commander had the excuse that it was forced upon him by the rest of Cobra because he screwed up so much. But in the comic, yeah, it was all his idea. So now we do come to the file card. And the most interesting thing here is that there is no mention of General Hawk at all. In this version, he was created by recombining the DNA of all the different kinds of Venom Troopers, creating, once again... They also implanted him with the theories of history's greatest strategic thinkers. So, once again, you've got Sun Tzu, Napoleon, and others in there. Just like Sir. Pentor. You know, under normal circumstances, just rehashing an old idea would piss me off. In this case, though, I don't mind at all. You see, this guy is actually Sir Pentor done right. They should have gone this route way back in the 80s instead of what we got. Because Serpentor, honestly, was pretty damn goofy. Cobra, la, 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 the outfit didn't help either. And that was Venomous Maximus, a great figure with a good, albeit somewhat reused, character. He is a worthy end to Monster Month and the King of Monsters! Well, G.I. Joe Monsters, anyway! Till next year, mortals! <laughs> hey, hey, uh, just a quick word. Next Tuesday, there should be a video, it just won't be a review. I'll have something to put up, but you'll have to wait and see. The actual review will be the Halloween special, which will be released on the 31st, for um, obvious reasons. So, I'll see you all then.